What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. I hope you're all doing well. Now this is kind of part two to this new planar thicknesser that I have here, or joint or planar if you're in the US. Um, in the first video I unboxed it and I assembled it. I'll leave a link up here and it'll also be down in the description below. In this video I'm just going to take you through a quick setup of this planar thicknesser and I'm going to show you how to use the machine we have a piece of sapili here which is cupped bowed and twisted so we're going to get that back to a perfectly flat parallel square piece of stock so we'll do that again your particular planar thickness are will be slightly different to this so always read your instruction manual that comes with it don't listen to the experts on youtube and i'm certainly no expert so i'll take you through for this particular machine there is a few principles that will pertain to most planar thickness hours, but the actual setup and how the machine operates and stuff will be different from machine to machine. But uh, enough of me talking now, let's jump in and do it. Okay guys, let's make a start on setting up this machine. I've stripped the fence off for the first part of this because we're going to address the in-feed table and the out-feed table. Uh, just for this, we're going to need an engineer square if you have one preferably if you have an engineer straight edge brilliant if you don't the straightest edge that you have will do uh, ideally a level as well so i will be using this level as my straight edge and as my level as it is a level so again starting off read your owner's manual read the instruction manual as it pertains to your machine don't listen to the experts on youtube which will tell you how to set your knives in relation to your outfeed table set your outfeed table in relation to your knives or your blades every machine is different um, so you'll see some guys will put the ruler on it and they'll say the knife should drag the ruler forward an eighth of an inch and that's perfect. Other guys will tell you the blade should be level, exactly level with your outfeed table, which is the case of this particular machine. I've already put a piece of maple through this and it came out absolutely perfect. So again, read what it says in your owner's manual. And uh, just for note, Charnwood, this owner, owner's manual is absolutely terrible. There's no uh, assembly instructions. It's just exploded diagrams. And some of the sentences make absolutely no grammatical sense. It looks like this was probably originally in Chinese and then just translated back into English because some of the sentences, it certainly wasn't <laughs> written by an English person anyway. So uh, yeah, that's that uh, instruction manual. Right, so let's get on to this thing. The in-feed and out-feed tables. This is what we're going to be adjusting. So the, two most, the most important thing with these things is that they are in the same plane. Now, along their length and across their width. And what I mean by that is your outfeed table will remain fixed and you will, you will move your infeed table in relation to your outfeed table. So that's just up and down. So if you imagine if I drop this down and I draw a straight line off the top of my infeed table and a straight line off the top of my outfeed table, as those lines overlap, they should be perfectly parallel along the length and across the width. And how we're going to do that or how we're going to establish that is if I bring my infeed table exactly to the same height as my outfeed table take your straight edge run it along it we can check that there these have already been set up you can move this outfeed table up and down but once you set it you lock it down and you don't move it again after that so it has adjustments on it and along its length we can see that this is perfectly flat the whole way so now i know that my both my infeed table and my outfeed table are in the exact same plane along their length it's nice and simple to get it along its width. I'm going to make sure that my machine is perfectly level, which it is. I'm going to check my infeed table, make sure that that is perfectly level, which it is. Again, check my outfeed table across its width, make sure that's perfectly level, again, which it absolutely is. So I know now that these two tables along their length and along their width are perfectly in line. And if we need to make any sorts of adjustments, I have adjustments here for raising and lowering this table back and we have adjustment screws on the side let me just show you that there now whip this up so with these two adjustment screws i can raise and lower these they're essentially stops for when i drop my table back down so you can adjust it on its width so very very simple we just need to ensure that our infeed table and our outfeed table are in the same plane Nothing more to say about that. 
Okay, next up, setting our knives or our blades in our cutter block. Now, depending on the type of planar thickness you have, like my last planar thickness, or I did not have an adjustment adjustable outfeed table, so your knives had to be adjusted in relation to your outfeed table. You need to keep them, again, perfectly parallel to the outfeed and infeed tables, so you will have to adjust your knives in relation to your outfeed table if your outfeed table has no adjustments on it. This particular machine has a real handy way of setting up the knives. The knives themselves just sit into the cutter block. They are tensioned by these nuts along here. There are springs behind the knives and you get a tool to set it, which I'll just show you here. So this is the tool for setting your knives. It's very, very handy. So I just sit this on my cutter block. I loosen these four bolts. The spring will push that knife or blade out and I just need to ensure that it touches this setting tool the whole way across. So I push the knives down with this tool and lock down my nuts the whole way across. And this sits perfectly over this cylindrical cutter block and uh, adjusts my knives the whole way across. So it's very fast and very easy. It's actually a great feature, this machine. Um, and other machines use similar things for their cutter blocks too. But uh, yeah, it just makes it nice and nice and easy. So very, very simple. I'll give you a look along at its length now and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay guys, here is the setting tool in place. It's sitting on the cutter block itself. So you can see it's the same diameter as the cutter block. It sits on it perfectly. And all I do is loosen these nuts. Again, these knives have springs behind them. They will push out slightly. You use this then to set it. You push the knife back in so it just touches the setting tool. You check it all the way along the length of the cutter block. It's nice, fast and easy and uh, super simple to set up. And so once that's checked from, all, from this side to this side, you know, on all three blades or knives, we're good to go. So uh, it's a nice little feature. Again, if your particular planar thickness or doesn't have an adjustment uh, or adjustable outfeed table, you will need to set your knives in relation to your outfeed table. So that's very simple. You would drop your outfeed table into place and you would take a straight edge and you would check those blades off your outfeed table. So that's the only difference. This machine is actually very, very fast and simple to set up, which is great. Okay, now that we know that our infeed and outfeed table and our knives are all set correctly, we have our fence back on, now we want to check that our fence is at exactly 90 degrees to both our in-feed and out-feed table. So that's where our engineer square comes in. Very, very simple. Take your engineer square, put it against it, ensure that you're making contact the whole way up and the whole way out on your bed. Again, it's just a square. We just want to make sure this thing is 90 degrees. We have a stop on the back of our fence, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so set that once you get this thing 90 degrees, so ensure that we're touching both top and bottom. Hopefully your fence should be pretty flat, and this one is pretty flat, so uh, we're pretty good there. I'll give you a look down along its length now and just show you that. So again, we're just checking for square the whole way along the length of this. Again, we want to make sure that we're touching both top and bottom, and hopefully your fence is good and flat in the middle, but most importantly, top and bottom. If you can get that with your engineer square and use your engineer square because you know that these are perfectly square. So we're perfectly flat across our bed and we're perfectly flat and touching um, across our fence. And that is the case the whole way down from end to end, which is happy days. And the adjustment screw, I'll just have to move this now and try and get you in for a look. Right, that is our adjustment screw there. It's just a bolt threaded through this part with a nut in here and once we're at 90 degrees we just lock this guy down so we always have a stop to go back to 90 degrees very very simple right guys there we go that is our planer thickness or our, our joint our planer set up ready to go again read the instruction manual don't listen to experts and i'm not an expert so uh, read your instruction manual that comes with your particular machine to, as to how to set it up but the principles will be the same about ensuring your infeed and outfeed tables are in the exact same plane both along their length and along their width getting your fence exactly 90 degrees to your beds is um our tables is vitally important and it's very simple just use an engineer square i do recommend if you have to remove that fence to put it into thicknessing 
mode or planing mode if you're in the US to always check when you put it back on that it is back to 90 degrees. It takes two seconds and uh, it'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of sapili that I have here, which is twisted. If you can see the twist in it there, it's cupped and it is bowed. And so we're going to take this to a perfectly flat, perfectly square, perfectly parallel piece of stock. And I'll show you how to do that on this machine. It's the very same process as you would do with a hand plane. You establish a face side, then a face edge, and you use that then to get two perfectly parallel faces and edges to those. So nice and simple. Let's do it. Okay, we're just about ready to go there now, just so you can see just how off <laughs> this piece of timber is. It's fairly twisted and fairly cupped, so um, it's the great thing about these machines. Within the space of a few minutes, we can have this perfectly flat. So we're just going to set our guard on this machine. It's nice and simple. Just loosen it with the handle here, drop it in place. So just drop it just above our material, and we can change the angle of the guard. So at different heights, obviously, we'll be coming in different angles just by twisting this. So we'll just flatten it out against the material. We don't want to press down on it too much. And then just lock it in place. So we just want to be able to slide underneath that and push it on through. And uh, the cutter block is always covered. Just a little safety thing. Again, refer to your instruction manual. Uh, don't listen to me for health and safety advice. So yeah, let's rock on now. Let's establish our face side. We're going to run this through multiple passes and um, we'll probably take half a millimeter cuts. Let's just do it nice and easy, bit by bit. And uh, yeah, it's going to get noisy now, so let's get on with it. Okay, there we go. We have established our face side. It's perfectly flat now, so we're just gonna put a mark on that so we know it's our face side. As you can see, there is absolutely no movement in that now. It's perfectly flat against our bed, so happy days. And once we're removing material all the way from the front to the back, we know we're good. So that's happy days. So now we wanna establish a face side. So we wanna make sure that that is perfectly 90 degrees to our face. Now. We don't, you might think that we could flatten this side, then just flip it over and flatten this side. But if you do that, you will have a perfectly flat face here and a perfectly flat face on this side. But there's nothing to say that you won't ed end up with a wedge. You can have two perfectly flat sides of a triangle, if you know what I mean. So uh, we don't do that. What we do is we establish a face side, then a 90 degree face edge and we put that face side flat down on our thicknesser and that gives us a perfectly parallel opposite face and the same goes for our side. We will put our side that we establish flat down on our thicknessing bed and that will give us a perfectly flat parallel edge and everything will be 90 degrees. So now that we have this flat, we can stand it against our fence and we're gonna run this through and establish our face edge. Right, so our face side and our face edge are now established. So as you can see, 
If you look down along it, we are perfectly 90 degrees to our face side and face edge all the way down. So now we can begin the thickness and process or the planing process if you're on the other side of the pond. So let's do that. Okay, here's just a quick look at the thicknessing, or if you're in America, the planing side of this machine. So here's our, our bed, here's our adjustment handle, so we can set the thickness. We can raise and lower the height of our bed with this, lock it down then with our handle once we have the correct thickness. And this is just a handle to engage our infeed rollers. So, very, very simple. Now, when we're putting through our piece of timber, we wanna measure the piece of timber for thickness and we wanna make sure that we put through the thickest side first because if you set this, if you measure the thinnest side and you set this setting to say, say it's 40 mil thick on one end and 60 mil on the other, if you raise this table to 40 mil and you put that through, it will jam on the 60 mil end. So just to bear in mind, measure your thickness and send through the thickness that are the thickest side first. And so we're gonna put our face side flat down now against our thicknessing bed and we're going to send it through and that will establish a face side exactly parallel to our face or our opposite face side, if that makes sense. Let's do that. Right guys, there we go. There is a perfectly flat, perfectly square, and perfectly parallel piece of Sapili stock now done on our planar thickness saw. So that's just been a quick vid on how to set it up and how to actually use this machine. Everything is lovely and square all the way around and perfectly parallel. So it's nice and simple. Just establish a face side and a face edge. Put your face side down flat on your thickness in bed, run it through, that'll give you a perfectly parallel face on the opposite side. Same with your edge, face down, get a perfectly parallel edge on the opposite side. And everything is square and true, ready to start some woodworking. So that's it guys. As always, hit like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.